everyone, it's Sharonda from Payer Awaits, and today I'm going to be reviewing Billion Season 5, Episode 2, The Chris Rock Test, which I still don't understand what The Chris Rock Test is. Like, I think I understand what The Chris Rock Test is, but I haven't been able to find the stand-up that this comes from, or if it's even about something that Chris Rock, the comedian, came up with. I still don't know. If you guys know in the comment section below, let me know exactly what the heck this means. But we know that Mike uh, Prince... Our new kind of nemesis, arch nemesis for um, X for this season. He is having his uh, retreat. This is one of the things that they talked about uh, in last week's episode. X is still upset that Mike snatched a cover from him for the new Decca's uh, cover. And so he wants to get payback. Um, so we see that. The episode really opens up with Chuck. He's going to see a therapist, a different type of therapist, not someone we would normally not, you know, the type of stuff that he was doing in the episode. I'm just like, okay, I mean, if this was going to help Chuck, you know, it's, it's fine. He's not a normal person, so I wouldn't expect him to have a normal therapist. Um, but um, he asked him, like, what is his most recent portrayal? And the moment that comes back to him is always when they were going to, when they were about to arrest X. And he just knew that Wendy was going to go to him. But then we find that the embrace that they had, this gave him a certain level of rage. But one of the things that I do appreciate in the conversation that the therapist is having with Chuck is, you know, if you focus a little less on X and really focus on working on yourself, I think you will be able to handle that rage. But to him, he could not control or contain that rage until he actually handles um, he handles X and that's pretty much where he is still at. However, I do think it's very funny that he's developed a, um, a parallel life to Dexter, which is an Easter egg because Dexter is another show that used to come on Showtime. And so he feels as though that he likes Dexter's code. So Dexter always had a code, even though he had this rage, this darkness inside of him, the wanting to kill people, that he would kill people who deserve to be killed. He would be delivering justice. Um, and that is what Chuck wants to do. He wants to make decisions that really benefits everyone as a whole. That is really just for the betterment of making sure that we have no criminals out on the street. And so that is what he is doing. And I guess Kate is supposed to be, you know, like Dexter's dad always had his, uh, Dexter always had his father to speak reason to him, to really help him stay on his path. He was like his morality. He helped him have morals as much as he possibly could I just found it funny the whole time him really going back and forth on he had a cold like this is what he did this is what I'm going to do I was just like I mean I don't know if you should necessarily be comparing yourself to a serial killer but do your thing Chuck do your thing so um the issue that he is dealing with in this episode is we see that the governor calls him and Kate into the office and the governor basically tells him after how Chuck came on the mining incident, the whole thing with Axe, um, he's going to give the cases to the Manhattan DA, which is the person that Axe was meeting with at the beginning of the episode. This is part of Axe's whole plan to try to take down Chuck as well. And so we see that all the criminal cases are going to be funneled through the Manhattan DA. And so during the course of the episode, we see that his friend judge um delugio he comes to him because he wants to be on the supreme court that is an exposition that he wants to have however there's this memo that came out this dude really helped write the torture memo i just like sir are you being serious but should i even be shocked at this point point? and so he wanted to request a meeting with the senator so he can address his head on so he can move forward from this so he can get the senator's blessing so he could become a part of the supreme court um so chuck is feeling very apprehensive about this he even had them waterboard him to see like you know can he argue the fact that this isn't torture but he was like hey like i love torturing myself but even this is uncomfortable for someone like me so this is definitely torture and we see that he ends up giving him the meeting with the senator and the senator is like heck to the no 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 we're not doing this like mm -mm, sir and so i think that you know, we see that, okay, he accepted defeat and, you know, Chuck was telling him, hey, you need to figure out another way to get what you want. But when he goes back to his office, we see that the senator is waiting in his office and it was Chuck that leaked the memo in the first place. And I was like, Chuck, you literally just said at the beginning of the episode that you weren't about to be about this life. And I thought that when he was on the phone in the beginning of the episode, he said release the memo or the release the order. I thought that he was referencing the order of him being raggedy with Wendy and basically freezing all of their assets so she can't make a purchase on a new place. 
but he was really talking about the whole thing with his friend, the judge, who just helped him with his mess um, previously, like in last season, the season four. So I was just like, wow, that's how we treating our friends, Chuck? And even Kate like was just like, why do we do this? And then he was like, well, now he's a new solicitor general. And so this is the way that he's going to help him do his evil bidding since they can no longer, since the Manhattan DA is getting all of the cases now, this is a way for him to go above, like before the Supreme Court. And I was just like, wow. But in his defense, he said he had already started this before he decided that he was going to live by this code. So I was like, you know what, Chuck? I'm gonna let this one go because you're trying to be better. But I was just like, you are hella disrespectful, but hella smart at the same time. Cause I didn't even see that happening. It was like, it had already happened before I could realize what happened. Cause they basically had to tell me, cause sometimes I'd be lost while watching this. But I thought it was really funny when he compared his dad to Nixon. I was like, I mean, you didn't tell no lies, but I was just like, wow, you just compare your dad to Nixon like that. Um, but I think it's really interesting to see Chuck this season and to see if he can really become a changed man. And even with the conversation that he's having with um, Judge Delugio, um, the reason why he's so infatuated is because he wants to know, like, for someone who wrote a torture memo, like, can you be a changed person? Because if you could be a changed person, then that means that I could be a changed person. And I think it'll be interesting to see Chuck's journey of him trying to be different um, while still doing the same things and having Kate to be the person who checks him, his voice of reason, his moral, his morality. I think that is very interesting to see um, how Chuck is going to do. I don't think he's going to win at it because even with this whole thing, you have this raise against X. It's a jealousy, but it literally has led to the destruction of so many other relationships in your life that is absolutely ridiculous that you still think it's okay that you're going to have like a different outcome when any time that you've gone after X is never ended well for you. So I don't know what the heck is going to happen, but Wendy... She's upset because he did freeze her assets. She ended up losing the place that she wanted to have. Um, Axe and Wags and Taylor, they're all out of the office at Axe Capital. They get a surprise visit from one of their um, large funds that they um, do business for. And it's up to her to try to figure out how they're going to make the client happy because they can't lose their business. And so she asks Lauren for help, which makes Taylor's personal coach upset because she was just like, hey, like she works for us. She don't work for you. Figure it out, but this isn't right. But Lauren ends up um, taking the help from her. Um, she ends up helping Wendy out rather. And she does a very freaking fantastic job at that. I love Lauren. I really love her as a character on this show. Um, and even so much, she did such a great job that Wendy offers her the IR job. But of course, uh, Taylor's personal coach, she was not happy about this. She went to Taylor's house and was like, so are you gonna okay this? And she was like, I mean, if she wants to do it, that's on her. And then she was not happy about that. She stormed out. I was just like, wow, Taylor, you got real curt with her. I was just like, okay, Taylor. I don't know what's gonna happen with you guys, but we see that she tells Wendy um, that she's having a really hard time adjusting to this new model with um, Taylor uh, capital being under X, uh, capital. So I'm interested to see what happens with her. There's obviously going to be a rift that's brewing already between Taylor and, and, um, Taylor's personal coach, but I'm interested to see how all of that is going to fall out. Is she going to end up betraying Taylor? I'm not sure, but I know she's not feeling it right now. Um, but in the midst of all of this, she kind of tells X, um, after the fact, like what happened. And then he says, you need to gut him, gut Chuck, and then she was like, oh, I'm definitely going to do it. So I can't wait to see. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about this out loud, when he was on the phone, it was about Wendy because they were like, he made the comment that I know this is going to be a warring gesture. And then that's when she made the comment like this is war. <clears throat> so I'm interested to see X, um, not X, Wendy and Chuck fight out this divorce the entire season. I'm very interested to see how far each party will go to make sure that Wendy can have freedom or if Chuck can try to hold on to Wendy as much as possible. But I think the main thing that has happened during the course of this episode is really between Axe and Mike Prince. So Axe, he's coming up with this whole plan on how he's going to embarrass Mike, everything he's been saying since last week's episode, how he's going to embarrass Mike at this um, at his own event. Mike makes his big interest. He didn't fool his own self into the retreat. OK, he flew himself in. 
And then they end up doing their fireside chat. But before this, Axe and Wax had come up with this whole entire plan, which makes sense to why they were doing drugs in the beginning of the season, the season five premiere, because they're trying to get this pharmaceutical company and they're getting the Sharma to basically um, legitimize what they're doing. So um, they are trying to steal this big deal from Mike Prince. And it seems like they're pretty much doing a very fantastic job of this. Um, we see their first um, head to head at uh, their fireside chat. And I thought it was a very interesting discussion and in how um, Prince is very aware of his privilege and how he calls Axe out like, yes, Axe, you came from nothing. But at the end of the day, you're a white man in one of the richest states in the entire country. So what did you really struggle to do? And I thought that their philosophies, how even though they're the same at heart, they're so different and just how they view the world, how they view their role in this industry, I thought it was a very interesting conversation. It almost seemed like Max won, but of course Mike pulled it out. And I think that why he's such an intriguing character is it takes such a little effort. Um, he comes off as just this good person and, and deep down you want to be like, there's no way he can be this good. Even Axe feels this way, but the way that he always outsmarts Axe is just crazy. And when we get to the end of the episode, we see that he literally stole the deal from Axe when Axe thought that he was basically had everything taken care of. And I find it so interesting because he brings up a moment in the fireside chat where he says, ultimately in order to be successful as you are you have to be a monster and then he was like hey I told you when I play I play to win and he absolutely won that entire battle so I'm very interested to see um the battle between Mike Prince and Axe throughout the course of the season I'm very intrigued by his character um I really like his character and even from the discussion that they had very good writing very great dialogue I thought it was very uh well done these two different philosophies from these men who are kind of the same but come from different backgrounds um but yeah I'm really interested to see what happens with that um Taylor came into contact with Oscar a fling we know Taylor did Oscar pretty dirty and Taylor ends up losing the account because Oscar does not like Axe and if his money is going to be at Axe Capital he has wants nothing to do with it even if Taylor is going to be the one managing um Oscar's money but you know he tells Taylor hey if you leave Axe again I'll be more than happy to bring my money back to you um but I thought it was an interesting dialogue between them because um, you know, he's still butthurt about what happened between them and their relationship. And she tries to explain to him, like, it took a while for me to get over you as well. Um, but you can tell it still bothered Taylor a little bit, uh, especially when Taylor tells him, like, this is the real reason why you lost that chess match. But I was like, you know what? I'm interested to see maybe is Oscar going to try to get Taylor back. But Taylor's with Lauren. I, I like Taylor with Lauren. I'm interested to see how their relationship works out. Um, but I thought it was interesting to see Taylor admit when something hurt her. I keep saying hurt, it's so horrible. Sorry, Taylor is not binary, so I just need to get my life together. But admitting that to Oscar that Taylor was hurt by him. So um, I think it's interesting to see these emotions, because you see at the beginning of the episode where Axe is like, can you handle the emotion? And Taylor is just like, yes, like leave me alone. But most importantly, the craziest thing that happened in the entire episode, Wags is trying to close this deal at the strip club, child. And this is where the Chris Rock test comes in. He sees this girl come out and then he just goes crazy. I'm just like, what happened to him? I thought of maybe his ex-girlfriend that he was sad about before in the previous, uh, was it this season? I think it was last season. But <clears throat> we find out that he felt the Chris Rock test and the stripper was his daughter. I didn't know Wags had a daughter, but I was just like, wow, Wax, I'm really sorry for you. But I mean, if she want to be a stripper, let her be a stripper. That's her That's her business. She grown. But I was just like, what is the Chris Rock test? I guess Chris Rock test, you don't want your daughter to become a stripper? Is that it? Somebody let me know in the comment section below if you guys know what the heck they were talking about. But I think overall, I'm really excited to see where these things are going. So we have multiple battles. We have Chuck versus Axe. We see that Chuck tells Taylor, I know what you did. I know that you told Axe what was happening, but at the end of the day, you are going to have to be a monster. So this conversation that kind of starts with Mike Prince and Axe, it kind of comes over into Taylor and Chuck's conversation. And so there's going to be this battle between Chuck and Axe, Axe and Chuck, but Axe really not that bothered like he did the whole little thing with the DA, but his main battle is going to be between him and Mike Prince. And then we see Chuck and Wendy 
and Taylor's just in the middle of the whole thing between Chuck and Axe. And I don't know what side Taylor is going to end up choosing, but we know that it's been being foreshadowed in the last week's episode and this week's episode that Taylor is going to have to choose a side or Taylor is going to have to become a monster to get from underneath both Chuck and Axe at the same time. So I'm interested to see how all of this is gonna happen. But you know what, Chuck, good luck to you or Dexter, Chexter. I don't know what I should call you at this point. But those are pretty much my thoughts on the episode. Um, I think this is more of a setup episode to really help us understand where the battles are going to be drawn, who are the battles between for the rest of this season. Um, but yeah, you know, Billions, it could be like just a setup episode and then something crazy happens next week's episode. So we don't know, but I will be tuning in next week to find out. Those are my thoughts on Billions season five, episode two, the Chris Rock test. As always, my name is Sharonda from Pay Your Weight. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I love you guys 3000. I'll see you soon.